Post-traumatic stress disorder, also referred to as PTSD, is a condition of persistent mental and emotional stress occurring as a result of injury or severe psychological shock, typically involving disturbance of sleep and constant vivid recall of the experience, with dulled responses to others and to the outside world. There is a What was that moment for you when you really realised you came home and you weren't coping how you should have been? I mean, hindsight's a powerful thing. Um, so I can look back now and see that perhaps elements of, of my personality post-Afghanistan perhaps weren't how I am now and probably weren't quite right, if that makes sense. Having PTSD, it's like living in a storm for me in my head all of the time. That's the best way to describe it. I'm always anxious. I'm always feeling paranoid. I need to be in sort of fight or flight mode. I'm always concerned in the back of my head about something happening. I, I'm always smelling something or hearing something that's making me remember something else. Intrusive thoughts all the time. It's just like a non-stop fight, really. Yeah, and I fucking hate it, to be honest with you. The UK has been in continuous conflict for over 15 years. Experts have long warned of a looming mental health crisis as a direct result of this large-scale deployment and the lack of support services available when soldiers return. Thousands of veterans now struggle with alcoholism, drug addiction and homelessness, with suicide an all too common result. Despite this, there are no official statistics, but the government deny they are ignoring the problem. The system's letting too many down. I don't think we can deal with demands on our own. Uh, we do need a national strategy. That's extremely important. I think the government needs to lead a national strategy. Andy has had to take much of his PTSD care into his own hands. What's the punch bag for, apart from the obvious? Jackie got it for me because I've got a habit of, or used to, uh, take out my frustration on hitting walls. That wall, the walls indoors. If I'm frustrated about something, I'll just come out and slam my fists into that instead which makes more sense than uh, hurt myself. And these are your daily meds? Yeah, so it's, uh, I'll take three of these a day, it's 150 mils. The doctor was telling me that this is the most common thing to use for people with PTSD. I don't really want to go up any higher because it made me feel shit, basically. <laughs> I've been very weird lately, you know, my head playing games and everything else. It's just all plummeted at once. <laughs> It's like I need to take a big step back from everything and just unscramble all my thoughts, my mind, and just get myself back together sort of piece by piece. I think every, every single day, if I'm honest with you, every single day, I will think about taking my own life. It just kind of got to a point where I thought I can't live like this no more. And that's when I decided to attempt suicide on myself. Sometimes the world gets so heavy and so hard up, and I just feel like I'm missing them. Cannot cope with all the numbers of people coming forward. It's not possible. As I looked inside, um, all I could see was the bottom half of his body on the floor. Here in the UK, the Ministry of Defence has no record of the number of suicides. It's only campaigners who've been keeping count. And last year, they estimate 58 took their own lives. Taking that first step of asking for help was a big, big deal. I felt weak. My name is Viv Johnston. My son, Danny Johnston, served for 10 years with the British Army and four years with Special Forces. He took his own life in May 2018. I can't even begin to describe how proud of Danny we all are and how well he did everything. I couldn't help Danny because I didn't know who to turn to. Just the crunch of gravel and a whispered word amidst the sun. 